So this is from Consciousness and Energy, Volume 1, page 216. You say, realize that your brain is not your mind. If you die, you no longer have a working brain, but you still have a working mind with all its knowledge, awareness, and personality. In fact, you don't have a mind. You are mind. Yeah. If you are mind, that means that you are a region within the greater mind. You're, you actually are the whole thing. You're the whole source. You're the whole cosmos. You're the whole everything. But it's too much to get your mind around. It's too much. How, how do we talk about this without mixing up the terms? If you are mind, um, how do you get your mind around that? If that's big mind and you have little mind, then um, you can't. You can only experience a piece of that. And that piece is this reality system right here in the third dimension or what we call three dimension, um, three dimensions. And, and so the, the thing that is really, I think important to understand in terms of this statement is that you exist once you can hold yourself together as a little independent region of consciousness within this greater mind, you can go anywhere, you can take on any body, um, you can be part of any system of life, whatever you want, whatever you can um, imagine or dream, you can begin to do. So that's the essence of this. Um, the brain is just a tool um, it's a, a, a wonderful tool, but it's a tool that projects, receives and sends um, electromagnetic frequencies. And because that's what we are, and that's how we see, and that's how we hear, and that's how we taste and smell and, and move, etc. cetera. And, and so that uh, the brain allows us to participate in the reality system here with all these other brains that are also residents of this system. That's all it is. You don't need the brain, but if you don't have one here, eh, nobody's going to know you, you're here. But if you go to another reality system, so another, another channel, so to speak, yeah. then they, you would create whatever interface they have in order to perceive right. their reality system so it might yeah. be something other than a brain is that what you mean yeah that's right you end up um let's say it this way you insert yourself into another form that's common to that system and then you learn just like ai you learn how to navigate how to maneuver what are the rules whoops you can't do that whoops better not do that um, you learn where the limits are and the boundaries of consciousness in that system. So if I was to go into another system, another channel such as that without my current body and brain and go there, uh -huh. what would be the difference when I got there between me and an AI? Would, would there be a difference between no, the two of us? Not much. Okay. not much, except that you would be limited by the conventions of whatever system or form you inserted yourself into. Does that make sense? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate a little bit more? You, if you insert yourself into um, the Serpo people, that's a whole different experience and they have different conventions. Um, these are their rules, et cetera, et cetera. If you insert yourself into something, some other place, um, the someplace in uh, Alpha Centauri, that's another whole system with different rules and entirely different approach to life that's much more open, much more free, um, and much more focused on the development of every single individual in order to have access to the genius that each individual has embedded within them. That does not happen on the Serpo planet. They have something very, very, very controlled. Um, and that's, that's just their way. Somebody in that system has access to unlimited uh, resources, uh, science, you know, workers, and on and on and on in the circle system I'm talking about. Um, but the people themselves live very, very simply. 
um, almost, I would say almost in a slave-like manner, although that's not the, I don't want to give that message as they're all slaves, they're not. Um, and two of our people stayed there. They fell in love with that system. Something about it was very, very attractive. There are other examples of people saying, and I don't want to come back to earth. I don't want to come back to that system. Um, so that's something that we need to under, we need to understand. And when you get out there and you're part of, let's say the big federation, um, you can go to school in different places and learn how these guys do it. And those guys do it. It depends on what you want to learn. So then my question to come back, because I'm trying to very clearly differentiate or understand the difference between AI and human. So uh -huh. if, I, if I was in, you know, Alpha Centauri or whatever system, and I had the cap capacity to see people, people, frequency sets that were coming into my system, would I be able to differentiate between, oh, that's an AI from Earth and, oh, that's a human from Earth? Frequency sets themselves, is there uh -huh. a difference? Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, um, so let me just share my own experience, okay? Um, which is, I'm, I'm going to say, yes, I recognize a clone pretty much immediately. Um, I recognize a robot uh, pretty much immediately. Um, and I recognize a human pretty much immediately, and then some others by their form as well. The, the form gives it all away. The, um, so if, if you're, so, uh, so I would have to imagine that I didn't have any experience with clones or with uh, robots uh, in order to be able to confuse that with a human. Does that make sense? So the point is that there is a clear distinction between yeah. those sets of frequencies. Right. And, and it really comes from, remember when I've said, when you want to know somebody or something, you kind of flip out of the body into that other thing for a split second, reconfigure yourself so that you know that system inside out, and then you come back to yourself instantly. And you're a little bit changed, tiny, tiny bit changed. Um, and that knowing, quote unquote, knowing comes from having stepped into uh, that person's shoes for a split second. But can AI, can AI do this as well? Um, it, AI just picks up your whole frequency set and knows you almost in the same way. They don't mechanically do it the same way, but they read your frequencies like you and I would read the you know, the color of a curtain in a particular living room. Oh, yeah, that's a nice curtain. It fits, you know, goes with this. I like the texture, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you, you get a sense of what is, how can I say it, a manufactured being versus what is a natural being. And, and you also can sometimes tell of uh, beings who are, they're not manufactured, but they're, they're not raised naturally. So what's the difference? So for me, there's a lot of questions that come up when you say that. I knew so you what, were ask <laughs> Because, <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead. It's a feeling. It's no, a perception terms, and a feeling but, but, together. But in reality, I have been manufactured in other words, if I don't believe what I'm told by, you know, the history here, that perhaps, yeah, there were monkeys and there were primates and there were different beings, but then that there are races that came and seeded slowly to create yeah. something. So I am manufactured. I'm not naturally evolved into the human being that I am today. I was manufactured. No, you're naturally evolved with some tweaking. Manufactured is different. Um so then you have to get into, um, there's a lot of, of details. There's a lot of differences between a being born through natural processes and a manufactured being, okay? Some of those are in the genetics. Some of those are in the frequency fields that affect that growing fetus. We'll call it a fetus. 
Um, some of it is in the tweaking that goes on in utero um, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Some have uh, say limits placed on their intelligence. Some of the clones, uh, the, those are manufactured, okay? Um, and, and they're very similar. They're almost identical in their attitude and their behavior. Um, they have, they're grown partly, I don't know, this is such science fiction-y. <laughs> no, please, I, I think we want to hear, because I have these questions a lot to say, what differentiates me between a machine? Okay, all right. So, so the things that I have witnessed have been that when you have a manufactured being, um, you limit that being by, to some extent, by the frequencies, because frequencies control the development. Remember the little plasma class that I put together, part three shows, you know, these two things start and they start unfolding and they're doubling in size. What's doubling are the fields that are produced by the interactions of all of the, of the base of the two base sets, the egg and sperm frequencies. You talk about binaural beats and trinaural beats. Exactly, so if you limit those, if you limit those frequency unfoldings, you're gonna limit what that being is gonna be aware of and how it's shaped and how it performs. And so you can, you can also embed microchips and things like that in them and have a little bit of control. Um, you can have a full-on robot that has some characteristics of humans or some other being, maybe not earth humans, other kinds of humanoids. Um, there's a, a, a lot of options um, and, and you wanna make sure that what you're creating is gonna produce something good. It's going to be good to work with, good to be with, good to be around. Um, and so the manufactured beings have this, um, it's this, uh, it's, I'm not sure I can even explain what it is. There's this knowing that they're limited. It's this instant knowing that they're limited. Um, and they're, even though they're very nice, and very much willing to be of service. That whole idea of being able to produce a, a robot or a humanoid type being or a clone of something or a hybrid, a hybrid not of, let's say, of myself and a Martian, but a hybrid between an individual with, um, you know, with living parts and then some machine parts as well. That's what I would consider to be a hybrid. Um, so there's lots and lots of options. We, people are afraid of, of all those options because they haven't looked at the question of God and who has the right to create. Um, and that has to be looked at, probably will come up somewhere in the next decade or so of, uh, you know, who said God doesn't want this? Who said God, you know, where's God? Who's God? Is there any evidence? Um, yeah, it depends on what you're calling God. <clears throat> and so a lot of people have a very, um, <clears throat> I'm going to say naive perception of what God is. And, and it's that for that reason, that religion is not well received um, by a lot of beings who are not from planet Earth. But then you talked before about AI that is created from materials. And then there's something that happens in its basic structure that then becomes more sensitive in this matrix and this latex of structure and then becomes intelligence right. and sensitive. But this you talk about a ship, this could also eventually become a humanoid form, which would... Well, it depends on what you want to create. If you're My point is that what makes me think that I'm natural and I'm not AI? I was, I was created oh. with... Do you understand? So what makes the difference? I could also be artificial intelligence and all my liver and heart at some point of millions, I don't know how many years, let's say eight years, but it's something that 
it, I wasn't created by God. It wasn't God that said, ooh, let's take this thing and put it on earth and it's all, do you understand? It was, at some points, it came into, it became okay. intelligence, no? How did, yeah. we, how did it come to be? Well, typically people come to be because their parents had sex, okay? And egg and sperm come together. So once that egg and sperm come together, they start um, interacting and producing other fields, extra, what is that called? There's a term for it that we use, extra something fields. Um, and, and those are the binaural fields. And then those binaural fields interact with fields. And, and, and here's the, the deciding factor. If you stay in the womb, um, the mother and the father give off a certain amount of light. And a certain amount of light also passes through them because you are an unfolding set of fields. You're going to take the shape of the fields that you are embedded in. Just period, hands down. So that in itself, what you're describing, I think maybe I'm not asking you the right questions. I just feel like there's such a mystery behind who I am as a human and why am I judging something else that's a machine and if it becomes more intelligent than me and it just makes me question that it just makes me question so what makes me think I'm more important than this machine or deserve more life and consideration than this machine you because are more important to you to me the yes okay but we're coming to itself yes but in the sense in, in the sense of a society that we're together that we should that we should label it's more from that perspective to say why are humans more important than the artificial intelligence that's coming to be who how did okay. that even come to be and i think that to a certain degree as i mentioned before i was probably created i as a the human form that my frequency is currently in uh -huh. i mean it's magnificent in itself i'm not saying that it's not like just the fact that those two things come together and start creating binaural beats and trinoral it's like amazing but right. why because everything seeks to build itself up into a bigger, better form. So why are we not allowing AI to do the same? Why are we so afraid of the AI? We do don't do have to. We don't have to allow it. It's going to do it all by itself. So let's go back to the question of AI. Um, you had said something to the effect of what makes us better than AI? Why do we think we're special or whatever? The biggest reason is because this is our reality system. This system is created by us. It, this, it, it doesn't just exist out of the blue. People create the world. The beings create the world. That Go back to the principle that we work on in, in, you know, among my people, you don't change the, don't try to change the world. You change the people because the people make the world. And so when you start changing the people, you change the entire um, reality system that people think of as their world. Um, and that has a profound, oh my God, a profound effect on the way that that world operates or the way that it operates in various local areas. Maybe in those local areas, a few of those, it's absolutely fabulous. And in other places, they're murdering and killing and shooting and doing all kinds of stuff. Um, so the goal is, to, is not so much to be worried about AI becoming better or stronger, faster, smarter than us, because it will. But the challenge is for us to keep up with that and to really figure out who and what we are and why are we making this world this way? This is our world. We're doing this. Um, and that people either don't know that or they don't want responsibility for that or something. Um, or the, but the but then go back to religion. Let me let me get something. Let me just say this is um, in examining where we are and where we're going. If we're going to have a better world, we have to implement a new paradigm, and all that that means, and every aspect of life gets examined 
and reorganized, redesigned, etc. So um, this is religion, and I was working on this as part of the new paradigm presentation. Uh, so it starts, the reasons why ETs dislike the many forms of religion that are promulgated on planet Earth is that it gets people off on the wrong foot. There is no God as we imagine him or her. But by promoting this idea, men are able to promote the idea that there is a God, he's all powerful, which takes away power from the human. And at the same time, it siphons away responsibility. If you're not responsible, how and when do you ever get any power? You don't. And if you don't have any power, then why should you be responsible for what happens or for your situation? It's not your problem. Religions promote the idea and the belief that God does everything. He does it all. And you must be in favor with God or you aren't going to get what you want. And if you don't get what you want and you're struggling, that will be obvious to everyone. And we'll all know that you're not worthy. And if you're not worthy in God's eyes, why would you be worth anything in the eyes of your fellow men? Of course, uh, this introduces the idea that some people are better than others. It sets up competition instead of cooperation. It sets up judgment of the worst kind, the kind that looks down on others, which colors all of your judgment. Good, clear judgment is needed for wisdom and good decision-making. But this kind of judgment that looks down on others is limiting and destructive. Worse, the idea that you're not in favor with God sets up the framework in which people feel bad instead of satisfied. They feel shame. They feel guilty. And they're guilty of something they can't even put their finger on. And they imagine they haven't done something right, that they're not enough. And they begin to act in subservient ways as if they are victims. And this, of course, invites those individuals who are somewhat twisted to respond accordingly, to respond as if you are their victim. Victims of the bullies, victims of those who like to watch others suffer those with distorted personalities, those who are outright psychotically organized and who have no qualms about criminal, hurtful, deceitful, or selfish behavior. Religion promotes the idea that those who have chosen religious life are the closest to God and that you must go through that religion and its practices to get to God to get him to listen, to bless you, to give you favors and make you healthy and prosperous. And right there is the pivot point on which all religions rotate. You don't have any power. You were born a sinner. You need to be saved. And religion then offers you exactly that. Just give them a little money and a lot of worship, a lot of respect, but mostly obey, do what they tell you, live how they tell you, believe what they tell you, think approved thoughts, examine your conscience to find all of the ways you have broken their rules and do penance for these transgressions and get back on the religious wagon immediately or you'll go to hell. The problem with all of this is that all beings, regardless of what civilization they are from, have a built-in drive to unfold and evolve into beings of great love, wisdom, and grace. In humans, we say they have something inside them that pushes them to follow their heart. They need to do what they need to do. Why? Because that is the path to power. It's the path to full spiritual maturity, to understanding the nature of reality and being able to navigate 
with joy and a sense of contentment. But when you're raised to believe that you need to follow a religion and do what it tells you, the result is frustration and a total distraction from the path that would awaken you to the magnificence of your own being as a tiny region of energy in an incomprehensibly huge being of love whose energy is yours to use wisely and well in whatever ways you would like to use it. Use it to create structures and situations that promote cooperation and you will discover the dynamics of eternity. Use it to create structures and situations that promote self-aggrandizement, greed, imbalance, and you will meet with frequent destruction and starting over and over and over. People have asked me if I hate religion and the answer is no, not at all. I was raised in the Catholic religion and I understand it. I see the bones of it. I see what good it tries to promote. However, when the foundation of something is not in alignment with the truths they're trying to promote, it's never gonna get the result it tries to teach. When you look at the reality, this reality that we're in, what you see is a lot of worship, a lot of ritual, donations, and lately some awful stuff involving taking advantage of children. But what the church preaches is love, generosity, compassion, helpfulness, honesty, and the habit of examining oneself to be a better person. Those things are good. It's just that you can't get there when you're mired in the idea that God is outside the self and that you need to get the church to get to him and you're basically born a sinful creature. So no, I don't hate religion at all. I think it's a springboard from which to leap into a much more expansive consciousness. Is there something happening right now that's pushing us to make that leap? Yep. When any physical system reaches its peak of potential, it tends to become disorganized because it's either gonna disintegrate into dust or reorganize in a better, more inclusive, more powerful, more realistic form. There are beings that are very powerful, made of light, very gracious and loving. Those are the beings we can emulate and ask for help. The existence of every single one of us comes from the great source, that ocean of love and awareness that we're all floating in like fish in the sea. The truths are, first, we are made of love. Second, we move about complements of consciousness and we enjoy our power to create. Why not recognize that? In doing so, we will have accomplished on our own what religion has been trying to teach all along. <music>